Good afternoon, Internet. This is Matt Buyak, and uh, today in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the second problem in the ProjectEuler.net problem archive. The uh, goal of this problem is to find the sum of the even Fibonacci numbers less than 4 million. So uh, let's get right into that. So we'll open up the terminal and open up Emacs, because we do everything in Emacs. Uh, open up a shell. And before we get started, uh, I actually kind of made a mess of my uh, my project setup in the first video. Um, I had intended to put all this stuff under its own directory, and I uh, didn't do that. So let's just real quick um, move all of these into the uh, into the template directory. And um, we, don't, we can remove our solver. And then we're going to copy the template directory to problem 001. Um, we'll go back over here, open up our template, and actually clean it out so we can use it as a template. This is uh, the idea is that we don't have to create all this boilerplate every time we want to start a new problem. We can just copy it to a new directory and we've already got our main um, .cpp. We already have our, our uh, main entry point there. We already have our, our make file. Um, let's see here. And the other thing is the analysis. Uh, we just need a uh, blank file here. All right. So now we can copy our template again to problem 002, and now we can actually get started. All right, so we have our main entry point here. Uh, so the idea, like I said, is to find the sum of the even Fibonacci numbers less than uh, four million. So let's, uh, let's see, we'll start here. We'll call that um, four million. It's going to be our upper bound. And we'll need some, uh, a few variables here. Uh, we'll call it, say, uh, previous, current, and next. And uh, so we'll start off, uh, we'll say um, previous is equal to 0, uh, current is equal to 1, and then we're going to say uh, next is equal to uh, previous plus current. And we'll say while uh, next is uh, less than n, then we're going to do some things here. Oh, we will also need a sum. Uh, so then we'll say if uh, next. So uh, you might remember from a previous video, the way we checked for whether a number was divisible, divisible by another number was to do uh, something like next uh, mod 2 to check, you know, equals 0 to check if it's divisible by 2. Uh, but there's actually a more efficient way of doing it when you're dealing with, with powers of 2. Um, and in particular, this case, we can check if the, if the lowest bit is equal to 1, um, then it's odd, and if it's equal to 0, then it's even. So we can, uh, we can use, this is the, the uh, bitwise and operator. Uh, so this will this extracts the, the lowest bit of this number, um, and then we can check to see if it's zero or not. So uh, if it is even, then we'll say uh, sum uh, plus equals next. Then we need to say um, previous equals current, current equals next, and next equals previous plus current. Also, I can't forget to initialize the sum to zero. Uh, 
Uh, and then when we finish adding up all our numbers, we'll just print that out. We'll say uh, printf uh, sum is equal to long unsigned. That's what that um, LU stands for. Uh, is going to be equal to sum. Go over here. And we have our answer. Um, now, one, uh, one thing we might want to be careful about when we're solving this problem, you'll notice I intentionally used 64-bit um, uh, variables here. And um, that's to avoid being a little bit cautious uh, to avoid overflowing the 32-bit integer. Most likely not necessary. Um, it's actually a good way that we can check that introduce the concept of an assertion. So um, in software engineering, there's this uh, principle that um, when you're testing and developing your code, if your code is going to fail, you want it to fail as early as possible and as loudly as possible. And usually that means uh, crash immediately as soon as you, as soon as you detect a problem. Um, that makes it as easy as possible to track down the root of uh, the root of the problem. Obviously, in production code, that's the opposite of what you want. In production code, you would like uh, your software to move heaven and earth to avoid to avoid crashing. Um, even if you just detect some kind of error, you want to try to recover from it or at least uh, present the user with some kind of error message explaining what went wrong, um, so that they're not just left with that experience of having the having the program just crash. Um, but when, like I said, when we're testing and developing. Um, we really want our, our program to, to die as soon as possible and as loudly as possible if something goes wrong so that we can find that problem and it doesn't just kind of like sneak by under the surface. Um, and so uh, one thing we can try doing is we can use uh, the concept of an assertion. And this is just a statement that uh, we believe to be true and in the event that it's false, the program will crash immediately and we can uh, recognize that there's there's something that's not matching our expectations, and it's a, a, a possible um, failure. So we might be tempted to write something. In this case, we want to check to make sure that we're not overflowing 32-bit um, integer. So let's let's suppose we go back up here and we make this a 32-bit integer instead of of a 64-bit integer. Um, and so uh, suppose we we assert that. Uh, we we might write um, assert uh, you know previous plus current is less than uh, int max, and for this I believe we'll need I think it's uh, limits dot h. So uh, int max is the actually we will want um, u int max. Uh, is the largest integer that can be represented by a 32-bit unsigned integer. But the problem with this approach is that if, if, uh, if this is going to overflow 32-bit integer, then it will do so before being compared to this value here. And so we still have the same, we'll still have the same overflow and our assertion won't fire. But what we can do is we can just move this to the other side of the equation and subtract it over there. Um, and so if this is the case, we know that we're going to, to overflow. Uh, or if this is not the case, rather, um, then we know we're going to overflow. And technically, this should be less than or equal to, because uh, if, if, we, if a sum is equal to uint max, that's the largest value that we are able to represent. So that value is OK. Um, and if we go over here and we oops, make our problem, oh, I see it. Um, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't like now that we're using 32-bit uh, integers. It doesn't like me using that long unsigned there. Okay, so now we can run our solver. And obviously, the um, we already knew this that the that the sum is going to be significantly less than four billion, which is the largest. Um, value that we can, or roughly 4 billion is the largest um, 
unsigned integer that we can, can represent. But let's try just as an experiment. Suppose we start, start ramping this up and we add, you know, a couple zeros on there. All right, we're getting closer, 350 million there. And there we go. You can see that we've that we've hit our assertion. Um, and I think we'll just take the uh, the opportunity now. If we go to if we go to our make file, um, just to go through the sort of basic process of debugging, um, we're going to add this G flag that will uh, include debug information in our program, so that we can um, so we can debug that. Ah, so this is one uh, uh, point to be aware of is that when you change your make file, uh, make is not smart enough to rebuild when you change your make file. So you actually need to manually um, clean out uh, or, or do make clean if you have a, a clean target um, and then manually rebuild it. And then we'll do GDB solver run and we can see here where the failure is occurring. Uh, so it looks like, well, obviously we only have one function, it's main. So let's, um, so let's go to, now this is curious. Um, somehow it does not appear to be including uh, symbols information in our program. It's a little bit unexpected. Let's just do some uh, basic checks here. So this is, ah, so um, here we've accidentally opened up the, the template make file. So let's go ahead and close that. Make sure that we've opened the correct make file. And Yeah, now we can see that we're crashing at the assertion as we expect. If we print out um, value previous, looks like that's uh, 1.8 billion. And if we print out current, uh, 2.9 billion. So um, you can see that that would add up to more than uh, that 4 billion value. And so this is um, behaving as we expect. If we were to try to, um, going back to our source here. Um, if we were to try to, to, to use n as, uh, let's see, how many how many zeros do we have there? It looks like uh, 40 billion, I think, if I'm counting that right. Um, then, we, then we end up hitting this failure case. Um, and obviously, for our problem, um, we're, uh, we're only concerned with um, 4 million here. But uh, um, but it's pretty common in software design that um, you know the, the the requirements of your program might change, and it might be that one day um, you know you're you're adding up all the numbers under four million, and the next day you need to add up all the numbers um, you know less than a hundred billion or or something like that. And so um, adding these kinds of checks to make sure that your your assumptions aren't being violated um, is uh, generally a, a good rule of thumb. Um, anyway, now that we've uh, taken that minor detour, we can uh, run our program, get our solution here. And so that's uh, we got four, uh, four, four million six hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred thirty-two. And if we go to the archive, we can see that that matches our expectations. So um, in the next video, I'm going to attempt uh, an analytical solution to this problem as well. Uh, you may recall in the first problem, I, I, uh, I solved the problem both using C and C++ and 
using um, analysis only. And for this, for this problem, I'm going to do the same. So uh, you can look forward to that in the next video.